important conference overall. Um, can you describe the atmosphere in terms of your achievements during this, this conference in particular? Well, first of all, I'm very thankful for being in St. Martin after a long time, uh, and especially uh, my gratitude to the St. Martin community for the inspiration after more or less a year after the hurricane struck. You can see the resilience in the community, how the people rebuilt and not waiting for government, as they say. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an inspiration for us in the Dutch Caribbean, but I think uh, regional-wise. And also I want to thank for the leadership of the Prime Minister, uh, Leona um, Romeo Marlin, for putting together this conference. Uh, that shows leadership, that shows response, uh, not only for recovery, but building resilience so that we learn from each other and make sure that we uh, are better prepared the next time. And as the team says, unite, prepare, but also adapt so that we can, as a people, become more resilient to any adversity, whether it comes from climate change or changing uh, economic environment, but other threats, like for example, Curacao and Aruba are facing now with uh, migration mm -hmm. from Venezuela. Uh, so it was very educational, but you see uh, the power of uniting because different islands doing different things in Martin, others like BVI, we can learn from each other. I think we have to continue this process. St. Martin did the first and Curacao offered to do the second. Let me ask you a final question, time is right now for your person, but if there is anything you should take back to Curacao from this conference in particular, what would that be? Well, first of all, uh, the opportunities that lie in collaboration. Uh, we already um, anticipating the signing of the regional, um, uh, let's say, the regional funding project uh, from the EU. Uh, change our team uh, in Curacao for our own 11 EDF uh, funding from renewable energy to resilience, because that's a broader umbrella that covers uh, the theme of preparing for disaster protecting biodiversity, renewable energy, but the people aspect, because we want to build more resilient communities. That's what we are taking back, but also all the people we met from different islands, we already see linkages that we can make that benefit uh, Curacao, but will eventually also benefit the entire region. Prime Minister, some people strongly believe having a conference of that sort is an other big way of partnering for officials from especially the OCT. Yes. Um, do you share that same sentiment? Well, the sentiment that I share is that uh, we are, of course, living uh, on beautiful islands, uh, but we are part of one Caribbean Sea, and we should as be acting more as one Caribbean. We all benefit from, for example, the tourism industry, our uh, brand, shared brand that we have, as Caribbean islands together, but I think we don't do much uh, together in fostering resilience, fostering economic development, fostering better connectivity between the islands, whether it's air or sea. Uh, so for it, for me, for me, uh, it was a necessity to be here. Uh, it's not a pleasure trip. Of course, it's a pleasure to be in Simarcon. Uh, we are taking back uh, important contacts, important content, and also the follow-up. Uh, we are already making, uh, let's say, the necessary uh, commitments uh, to follow up on this uh, conference. And that's why, um, let's say, inspired by the leadership of St. Martin, we already offered to organize a second uh, summit in Warsaw. can win with the Caribbean lottery you can win making a difference changing lives, changing lives. take a chance take a chance and you can win with the Caribbean lottery you can win you can win 
the Phillipsburg Methodist Church proudly presents the Harmonics in Concert under the theme Praising in Harmony. This exciting concert takes place on Saturday, November 3rd at 7.30 p.m. at the Princess Port de Plaisance Pavilion. Guest artists that will be sharing the stage are Don Froston, Angie Pontiflet, Cecil Griffith, Karen Cadogan, Raymond Benjamin, Benjamin Bell, and Shaba along with the Djembe group. Come out, support, and be blessed by the Harmonics in Concert on Saturday, November 3rd. Proceeds of the concert will go towards the upgrading of the audio-video system of the Phillipsburg Methodist Church. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. TLM, connecting you. Why I'm saying this? Because if the teachers and the civil servants do not step up to the plate and become members of their respective unions, then the numbers that you need to maintain your seat in that body, if they dwindle to a certain, below a certain level, you will find yourself in problems. And that's why the coming week, the Windward Islands Teachers Union will embark on some information sessions and what we call a membership drive at a number of schools. We just have to finalize with the sober so that we can go to the St. Martin, um, uh, the Sundial and the Milton Peters College. And we have to finalize a date with the Protestants Christians so that we can go to the Helmick Snyders and the Asher Stevens because generally I already touched that request already, but we need to now put dates in perspective. And after that, we are going to continue with other school boards because we have seven school boards on St. Martin. So this is only two school boards for us to, in our campaign, to show <clears throat> the teachers that as an anti-poverty platform member, coordinator on one side, we are talking about the eradication of poverty, but if they don't step up to be the backing of their union, poverty is also going to penetrate into their profession. Because with the lack of not having for seven years already, you didn't have that um, cost of living adjustment structurally applied to your salary. You know what that means also? When you're ready to go on pension, um, they are going to take, let's say, the, now the mean or the medium of the years that you have worked. If you have not been getting structurally an increase, then you are going to face problems when you are at the age of 60, 62, or 65 plus. Which means, again, as our whole campaign is about having livable pension 
wages also. We can only carry out this campaign from all angles if we have our members really, really stepping up to the plate and becoming members to also understand. Do not wait until you are at the door of 65 because the fighting spirit to put things in place have to happen now. You have to put things in place so that when it reaches to the point of retirement, you can retire with ease. That is one of the very important um, messages that I would like to get out there. Um, in continuation, you know that we had a number of issues at the beginning of the school year with the St. Martin Academy PSVE teachers to the tune that they brought a number of, of um, things to the forefront where it pertains to their, their school manager of the director at the school with a demand that the person, this person be actually re assigned to something else because of the lack of skills in leadership and the lack of the skills instead of bringing the staff together the skills that are now really putting the staff at a, at a, a distance from from her we have also gotten an invitation as y2 from the minister's cabinet to have a discussion on this. And after this discussion, the minister visited the school and had a talk with our members, the teachers. He also created a possibility for the school directories for her to rebut. And that happened at the government building. It was actually her rebuttal was what teachers would call insult to injury because her rebuttal had little or nothing to do with some of the questions and concerns that was raised at the campus in the meeting, but it was like to put down a number of persons. They went into files and had it projected on um, what we would call on a laptop or a screen, had things projected, things that happened um, and should have been uh, round off case, things that happened over a year ago or so. And this behavior only happened after a meeting in May, on May the 18th, this behavior become vindictive and explosive after the meeting where the staff called for a clarification on what has been portrayed in the courts of a termination of a teacher Based, to the, based on the fact that her position is becoming um, redundant. Only to find out redundancy is far a word to use for that because even though you, they are going to a new school type, seemingly the function of this person is still going to be needed. And you have to... The, teach, the children that are in the older stream, before you introduce the new one, they have to build off. They have to finalize. So until they are finalized within that system, you still also need this type of um, profession. And only to find out CVQs, when you, you have that type of exam that you're moving to, you, you need this same profession. So it is under false pretense that this teacher were being terminated. Needless to say, the teacher brought the matter to court.
You can win with the Caribbean lottery. You can win making a difference, changing lives. Change lives. Take a chance. Take a chance, and you can win with the Caribbean lottery. You can win. You can win. Hey, ma, how are you doing? You busy? I hear just paying some bills, taking care of business. You know what it is? <laughs> I know you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want. I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. But I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while you're online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, Ma. I'll get online with Bib now. All right, darling. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Web today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices, the Winwood Islands Bank, now your online banking partner in progress. From the Department of Youth, donations to afternoon school programs. Last Friday, the Department of Youth in collaboration with UNICEF Netherlands, hosted a presentation ceremony to mark the culmination of their after-school program mapping and support activity. Afternoon school programs are instrumental to bridging the gap between teacher and parental supervision by facilitating the development of sporting activities, allowing more time for the expression of the creative arts, coordinating field trips, and building character and self-esteem in our youth. In the governing program 2018-2022, it is outlined that the eradication of poverty and inequality requires us to improve the financial welfare of the community by expanding the afternoon school programs. At this time, our partnership with UNICEF Netherlands has made this donation possible. The ceremony also served as a symbolic presentation to 14 deserving after-school programs. The items presented will replenish the inventory of arts and crafts materials, books, sports equipment, games, toys, and musical equipment which these organizations lost during the passage of Hurricane Irma in September 2017. Hurricane Irma brought much distress, but in its wake, we as Sualigans have found that we are overcoming together. In closing, a few congratulatory remarks. Allow me to extend my congratulations to two young St. Martiners, Makeda Schillingford and Anderson Fleming, Anderson Flanders. Makeda, a past member of the St. Martin Youth Parliament, is now studying in Texas, where she has been elected as the parliamentarian for Region 2 of the Texas Junior College Student Government Association. Anderson Flanders is studying in Connecticut, and his artwork has been selected to be part of the American Arts Professional League 90, 90th Grand National Juried Exhibition in New York City in November. We are proud of these 
young people who are carrying the St. Martin brand far and wide. Congratulations to both of you, Makeda and Anderson, and also to your families. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. The Phillipsburg Methodist Church proudly presents the Harmonics in Concert under the theme Praising in Harmony. This exciting concert takes place on Saturday, November 3rd at 7.30 p.m. at the Princess Porte de Plaisance Pavilion. Guest artists that will be sharing the stage are Don Froston, Angie Pontiflet, Cecil Griffith, Karen Cadogan, Raymond Benjamin, Benjamin Bell, and Shaba along with the Djembe group. Come out, support, and be blessed by the Harmonics in Concert on Saturday, November 3rd. Proceeds of the concert will go towards the upgrading of the audio video system of the Phillipsburg Methodist Church. The governor was asked by us, can you instruct the informateurs so that when they go and talk with the political parties after the election, that they can see if they can find them to unite on prioritization of the eradication of poverty. <laughs> the informateurs invited us. We went there and we presented them what we also had presented already to the political parties. Nothing of what we presented was discussed with the political parties and was back in the results of the inquiry of the informateurs. So with that said, we said, OK, then we have to go to the formateur. When the governor appointed the formateur, we brought a letter to the formateur and we asked him, can you prioritize eradication of poverty in your negotiations with the parties to form a new coalition? And he said, sure. You can be assured that we will do everything to alleviate the poverty, he said. But in a meeting that he had with the anti-poverty platform, in our office, one hour meeting, we discussed, Mr. Heiliger, don't talk anymore about alleviation. We want eradication. And we explained him the difference, just as Claire did just now. What was the result? They were discussing three months to form a new government. And after three months, there came this governing program. And what was in the governing program for the poor and the needy? Only one thing of what we asked in our 10 points of um, support for the input of a governing program to eradicate the poverty. They said they are going to study what is the poverty line. It's imagine. Where everybody knows already what is not enough. Where everybody knows that $10,000 surely is enough. Now we're going to study. Meanwhile, the people can keep hungry. And that is what we say. A lack of respect for the people of St. Martin. And the dialogue that was requested has not been provided. So with the end result, that 15 parliamentarians, they have approved the governing program. 15 parliamentarians have approved even the National Recovery and Resilience Plan 
that it was set up with help from the government. And when we analyzed those documents online, nothing in it for we. How we will be getting out of poverty? That's not in the... Re they're going to rebuild. They're going to build back better and stronger. But they're not going to build back our pockets. Better and stronger. What we see is a total neglect. And with the answers given by the ministries on the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty, you could see they don't want to eradicate the poverty. So this is the result of not dialogue, dialoguing with the anti-poverty platform. Because we could have sit at the table, we could have been discussing all of these wrong thinkings, and we could have been improving their thinking and policies for us to get out of poverty. With that said, we say, it's never too late. One year after Irma, the documentary showed you already, we complied with what the International Universal um, Declaration of Human Rights actually expect from all of us. Respect the people that you have around you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, the neighbors have spoken out, they spoke out, and we will continue to speak out on their behalf until the poverty is eradicated. And as long as the poverty is not eradicated, we will ask for help, humanitarian help, because when you look at the situations out there, when you see the video documentary, you can understand this is not human. This is a violation of human rights. And especially in a time that just now they want to send a bill to St. Martin because one detainee, his human rights were violated. We want to come up for the violation of human rights of all the people of St. Martin.